Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I get a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Benchmade Knives Barrage, full size. Uh, first off, though, I want to thank my Patreon patrons for making this and many other reviews possible. Seriously, they are the lifeblood of the channel, they make it possible, and their support means the world to me. So thank you very much for that, Patreon patrons. Next thing, uh, let's go on ahead and do some size comparison. First, here it is against the uh, Spydeco Delica. Here it is against the Z Hunter ZB138. Uh, here it is against the Ontario Rat Number no. 2. Uh, and, of course, next to the uh, Spydeco uh, PM2. And then, finally, a uh, another kind of relevant size comparison for a lot of folks is going to be to another Benchmade. That would be the Benchmade 940. And so we can see here that the barrage here is absolutely not a small knife. And actually, we can compare it up against a ruler here. And we will see that the blade comes in, depending how you want to measure it, a little bit over three and a half inches, like 3.6, something along those lines. So there's that. Next thing, um, this guy does not have a disassembly video. Um, This is because this is an assisted knife. What that means is that when you press this thumb stud out past a certain point, with no additional force, the knife deploys itself. This is the Benchmade Axis Assist. Unfortunately, that makes this knife not particularly disassemblable. Um, the Axis Assist knives are just generally held to be not, that, that's not a good idea. You can do it, but it's very, very difficult to get the spring back in place, and I didn't trust myself not to injure the knife, so I didn't do that. Next thing, um, Benchmade has a very elaborate customization tool, um, and, and that means that this particular model is not quite standard, but I'm going to be reviewing the model, uh, generally speaking, on the basis of sort of the base model but also talking about some of those customizations available. So anyways, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So on the good side, to start with, um, I have to say the uh, base model uh, price on this guy is actually not so bad. I mean, certainly it's it's Benchmade, but it's made in the US of A, right? Um, the base model has a 154 cm steel, and it is $136. This is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but it feels reasonably workable, and it's a little bit less expensive by Benchmade standards compared to, for instance, United. 940, which is coming in much higher than that. So although I'd certainly like to see that the materials go up a little bit, or maybe the price come down a little bit, um, the, the base model price on the, uh, the the barrage here isn't a bad thing. Next thing, this guy uses a, uh, a nice clip. Um, Benchmade's clips are good to go, and they, they are, of course, able to swap the clip out to a deep carry or something like that, and that's something you can set up in the customizer. The clip works well, um, and it is, by the way, a completely, uh, you can mount the clip to either side. Couple that with the fact that the axis lock is available for other side, as well as the safety in the back here, uh, as well as ambidextrous thumb studs. That means that this is a fully ambidextrous pocket knife. And that is a wonderful thing for about 10% of people. So um, that, 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 that's a great thing. Next thing, um, this has a an assisted uh, deployment. And the thing is, um, assists are getting to be a little, well, I don't know. Um, for many people, they feel a little bit dated. That was a thing that was very, very common around the mid-2010s or so. Um, but it has become less and less so, especially as companies have gotten better at producing smooth pivots, tight tolerances, etc. Um, but the thing is, one nice thing you can say about an assist is that it is very reliable. All you need to do is give a little bit of effort here to the thumb stud and the knife will deploy and this deploys with an amazing thwack um this deploys very very powerfully and so this is a knife that mean that no matter what i mean you can get some sand up in here you can get all kinds of nastiness up inside there um but it's absolutely not going to be a uh, a problem it will deploy very cleanly and that's that that's a great thing this is a knife you don't need to worry about deploying although actually one of the nice thing about this although i don't see accidental deployment as being a factor here um and i don't actually haven't, uh, I haven't ended up using this very much, but there is a safety along the back here. What that safety does is uh, it prevents accidental opening and closing. When I move this guy forward, so in order to uh, engage the safety, you have to press this guy. You can't just kind of slide it this way. You have to press down and forward. And then at that point, this engages uh, some kind of a little mechanism in there. You can see that that mechanism right inside there. Um, but it engages a mechanism which prevents the, uh, the, the access bar from sliding. Um, and as a result, this knife can no longer open. With the safety in place, I cannot open this pocket knife. Similarly, with the blade fully deployed, if I put the safety in place, um, this knife becomes impossible to close. The, you are simply not going to be able to close it. And that is a, a beautiful thing. Um, and so, uh, you know, it adds another layer of security, both to the lock when open and to the knife when closed. And given the fact that it is very, um, well, basically, you're not going to accidentally turn it on, and you could probably go through life without ever doing so, it strikes me as not a bad thing. And especially given that it's fully ambidextrous, eh, no, 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 no real loss there. 
So that's good. Next thing, this is using the, uh, the, the this is using a Tonto blade shape, although you can certainly get them in a, a conventional drop point or other styles there. Um, but the Tonto blade shape can actually be nice for some things in that you get a very sharp tip, but you also get this secondary surface here, and that can be very good for small scraping sorts of jobs that you might not be able to get. You know, you can't necessarily get the full blade of a knife down on the table, but the Tonto blade gives you a nice scraper surface. So for pure utility cutting, the Tonto is nice, as well as giving you a secondary tip down here for box opening. So um, that, that that can be nice. And I have to say that the edge geometry on this guy is quite reasonable, coming down to a reasonably thin edge, and they reasonably thin. So, you know, no real arguments there. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, this is a pretty damn good knife in the hand. It fits pretty well. There's not really a whole lot going on with it, but it's got niceties like finger grooves, extra. Um, this is not going anywhere, as well as the jimping in the backspacer here means that this definitely works very well in the hand. Um, You do, uh, you are a little bit far from the cutting edge. As you're holding this guy, the cutting edge is a good ways away from the hand, but it's not so bad. So I, I have to say, I do appreciate the ergonomics on this. That's quite good. Then finally, um, it, it feels like a, a very robust knife to me. Um, and, you know, I've handled a bunch of knives and, you know, certainly robustness is one of those things that's massively overrated, I think, in the knife market, because by and large, if you really need a knife that's going to take all the abuse you can, you should probably use a fixed blade anyways. But it is a relatively robust piece with full, st uh, full steel liners. It's running on washers. It's got a strong handle, a strong blade, a strong lock. Um, overall, this feels like a knife that I could put a lot of abuse on, and it really wouldn't complain. And especially, it's going to be robust to bad conditions. Because it's got that assist, um, it's going to be very hard, you know, especially a knife that has a, uh, a relatively fiddly action that really relies on frictionlessness to be able to pop open. And I'm not using the 940. It's on washers as well. But in a world where you've got lots of little ceramic bearings, this could be robust to sand and such and grit in a way that those things might not historically be. So, um, th you know, that can be nice. And so to me, all that is the good is that it's a pretty robust knife with good ergonomics, a tanto blade shape. The whole knife is fully ambidextrous, both in terms of clip and in terms of every operating part, meaning a lefty has exactly the same experience. Um, it's got a safety that is very optional, but very effective. It is a strong and reliable deployment. And the base model price is actually not so bad particularly for a knife that's made in the U.S. To me, though, the thing that's great about this knife is the customization options. Um, the customizer runs a little bit more expensive than the base model, actually, um, pretty substantially. The lowest configuration you can get starts at 185 bucks, and that makes sense. They're trying not to completely undercut all of their dealers and whatnot, um, but you can go all the way up very easily exceeding 300 bucks on this model and way higher on other ones. This isn't the only knife they can customize, but it's one of their more popular ones. Um, but you can choose different blade shapes. So you can do the Tonto style blade with or without serrations. Um, this particular unit has some serrations in it. Um, you can, uh, and you can choose, like I said, there's a Tonto or a drop point there. Um, you can choose different blade steels. Um, this guy has a, an M4 blade, uh, which is a really, really nice steel. I'm a big fan of M4. Um, it's one of my very favorite steels, actually, but it also offers is S30V as the base, and S90V is a, an additional upgrade there with a nice stone wash on it. You can do different uh, colors, so you can do a satin blade uh, with, with a more conventional sort of this look, or you can do a DLC blade, and you can even uh, engrave onto that. And actually, that is one thing to highlight here, is that they do a fair amount of engrave work on here, or lasering uh, onto the blade. And you can see, this is just one of their default templates, but it's it looks quite, quite nice. Um, you, you can see here, everything is very crispy. I, I very much appreciate that. You can also add text for instance, uh, along the middle of the blade, that kind of thing, which could be a great thing as a commemorative gift or something like that. You can choose your different handle colors, ranging from black to a, a you know much more attractive colors out there, um, which is nice. You can also choose different materials, up to carbon fiber. Uh, I think there were some other options there for you. You can choose your different clips. You can choose hardware colors. That you can do pretty much anything from a relatively boring color swap, like oh, give me a give me an S thirty V barrage, but I want it in blue, which is great to something that is a true aesthetic masterpiece. You can do all kinds of things with this customizer. And the thing I like maybe most about this is that it allows people to get the knife that they want without waiting around. You know, other companies very regularly will do things like sprint runs and things like that where, oh, well, now you can get one in blue, but the thing is, there are only 10 of them available and it's only through this shop and they're using this steel. As opposed to the customizer where it's just like, I want one of these in blue and I have 180 bucks to spend. Okay, here, let me log on to Benchmade's website and have one on my doorstep in a little while. That's a great thing. I love the fact that you were able to get the knife exactly that you'd like without waiting around playing the sprint run game, doing the force scarcity stuff. This is a beautiful thing, and I really badly wish that every Benchmade knife had this option. I mean, seriously, this would be... No, 940, this video isn't about you. Why are you... Oh, that's right. 
Anyways, I wish that all of the Benchmade models had this option, or at least some of their most popular models. I mean, I would absolutely bug out if they had... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, anyways, um, so this is a, a beautiful thing, and I also wish that other manufacturers would go this route as well. I think this would be so very, very nice, and especially for companies that love doing the big sprints. Oh, boy, would I love to see just a build-your-own-sprint model. That would be amazing. So to me, at least, what's great about this guy is that customizer option, which is, frankly, as far as I'm concerned, the thing that Benchmade is doing best right now. Having that available is an amazing thing, and it's one of the things that really puts them, uh, it gives them a strong advantage over the competitors. So I, I love the customizer. Um, on the bad side, actually, on the customizer note, those need to be perfection. You need to, if you order something that is custom-made for you, it's not like you can return it afterwards. Right? Um, so they need to be perfection. They need to have great action, great centering, etc. No blade play. I mean, how bummed would you be if you ordered something special and got one with poor centering of play? And by the way, this guy came to me absolutely dead on. There was no problem there, but I've had friends get uh, purchase uh, high-end customizer pieces and have issues with centering and things like that. Um, and so, although they did eventually make it right, that's kind of a, a, a problematic thing. So I really very much hope that Benchmade's most, you know, completely retentive quality control person is running the show in the customizer division, because that could be a really negative experience for somebody. So, um, the, the first off, there's that. Um, next thing, the base model uh, of the, the, the Barrage is using 154 CM steel. This is different, by the way, from CPM 154, which is in many ways a superior steel. It is the same chemical steel, but it's made using particle metallurgy, um, and that's, it just provides it with a little bit more advantage. Um, 154 CM is a steel that is fine. Frankly, it's probably a little bit underrated. I would put it in the good to go for everyday life sort of thing. It's very easy to shop, and it's very it drops beautifully, but it's just a little less impressive as the prices kind of keep creeping up on things. Even moving that to CPM 154 would be a great improvement, because that's, uh, again, among my favorite steels here, or S30V or something like that, but that, the base model 154 CM is a little bit like, oh, okay, there's a cost cut. Um, so there's that. Next thing, the um, size on this guy of the blade, like I said, this is coming at 3.6 inches is the nominal number here. Um... Yeah, I'd buy that. Uh, it's it's a little bit much. I'm going to be real with you here, just because, especially if you're in an area with a three and a half inch knife law, this is just over the line, but not in a way that matters, right? So I'd like to see things, you know, kind of at or under those kinds of lines in the sand, so to speak. Next thing, this is an assisted knife. And I got to say, assisted knives is something that is slowly going out of style. Um, and I think for, for very good reasons, right? Um, because one of the downsides with assisted knives is that they are more difficult to close one-handed. They're, they're just, and especially given that they're are so many knives out there that are manual knives that are just so very easy and this opens at least with good maintenance just as reliably as an assisted knife there is really no strong need of an assist i it's i guess it's good that there's the option there but it's just not something that i think is the best choice for a lot of folks out there i would generally recommend that most people go with a knife that is not assisted unless for some reason they need that reliable opening mechanism even in really weird situations you know you're hanging upside down or something like that in a high grid environment, you know, then maybe okay. But uh, for me, generally speaking, and add to it, and the biggest issue, frankly, is the legal complications in some areas and places, uh, areas and places, both areas and places, just in case you were clear. Um, th there are restrictions on assisted knives that are not present for manual opening knives. Um, and so th th that can definitely be a little bit tricky. And I would just prefer it if, if the knife were uh, easier to close one handed with just a nice good old fashioned phosphor bronze action. But that's kind of the nature of the barrage, whatever. Take that for what it's worth. Um, the biggest, I would say, issues with this are two things. This is a very thick knife. Um, if we take this guy and we put it next to the Benchmade 940, we can see that although size-wise they're not all that different, thickness-wise they are very, very different. I mean, we can measure this guy in terms of thickness here, and uh, yeah, we are coming in at 0.64 inches at a reasonably, and then once you throw the clip in there, 0.73 inch, yowza. This one's big. You're going to feel this in your pocket, pecking you all, well, actually, no, it's not pecking you. It's just being, it's just being big, shall we say. Um, so this is absolutely a thick boy, and it's also a relatively heavy knife. We're coming in here with 3.6 uh, ounces of blade, <laughs> inches of blade. Turns out inches is a measure of length, ounces 
is a measure of weight, and that measurement here is 4.49 ounces. It's not a super lightweight knife, um, way, way under the ounce an inch sort of idea. Um, and then finally, uh, actually, that's, that's, that's the only things in the bad here, is that it is definitely a heavy knife. It's a thick boy. Assisted knives are going to be, a, it's something that I think a lot of people do appreciate and understand, but it's something that I don't think should be a default for people, even though for a long time in the market, it kind of was viewed that way. Um, it is uh, just over a legal line. The base model is in 154 cm, which is starting to get less impressive at those prices. And then the customizer knives, it's a great thing, but they need to be perfect every damn time. On the ugly front, um, the biggest issue that I have with this knife is that it's not straightforwardly disassemblable. I mean, sure, there is probably a way to do that, but I just don't trust myself, right? Um, I don't want to damage the knife, or I don't want to have the knife in a situation where it is permanently de-assisted. Um, and so I dislike a knife that cannot be reliably maintained. Assists do tend to function better even with poor maintenance because you're not relying on smoothness or anything like that. This spring will power this blade open, even if it's good and grimy in there. But I do wish that this were designed in such a way that this assembly was straightforward. And for what it's worth, there were lots of assisted knives out there where that is pretty straightforward. And Benchmade, of course, does have a good warranty. But the thing is, I just don't want to have to rely on that for inevitable service uh, of the piece. And, you know, of course, you can blow it out with canned air or something like that. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So, um, to me, at least, that's the ugly here is that it isn't straightforwardly disassemblable. Final conclusion, this is a fine knife. It's got a reasonable base price, a strong, reliable deployment, a, a, a good safety option here on the top. It is completely ambidextrous with solid ergonomics, a sense of robustness, and of course the ability to customize the knife. The base model is a little bit behind the times in terms of steel. The size is a little odd. Assisted knives are getting to be a little less compelling as more makers really nail the unassisted actions. Um, it is a big boy on every dimension and there is no reason to take it apart, but the thing is I, I still think it's a pretty damn good piece. In fact, it's a knife that winds up feeling a very utilitarian, right? Not that it eats utilities, but instead that it is just a knife that you use. That was a really bad joke, by the way, just in case you missed it. Um, but anyways, the uh, it, it skews a lot of the knife geek minutia, right? This is not, a, even though the aesthetics of these pieces can be quite great, um, at the same time, this is not an Instagram knife. This is not one of the brand new fancy pants sorts of pieces that, you know, a lot of folks are interested in. Instead, and it doesn't even fit a lot of the modern trends that are most, this is instead just a very good, capable working tool. If you have a person who has one knife that they beat on day in and day out, it is their kind of thing. It is a very, very nice choice. And particularly if they want to customize that one knife, to their specific tastes. I mean, that kind of customization approach can make this guy a, a much more compelling piece than I think it ever would have been otherwise. And so I, I think that this could be very good. So if you are looking for the latest and greatest in the knife market, in, in the churn of day-to-day -day Instagram knives designed to look really pretty, to function reasonably well as well, um, but, you know, to, to, to really advance the state of the art, this probably isn't it. But if you want an honest tool that'll get a good bit done, then I think this, especially combined with that customizer allowing you to get a, a, some something exactly what you want, I think this model might provide you with a barrage of good options. So anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you and have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. Oh, wait, you're still here? Did, did you have a question about the design of, of this particular piece? <laughs> so... <laughs> Sorry, I was trying real hard not to. Uh, so this is what happens when the folks in your Patreon patron discord get a crazy idea they run off on your own while you're in a day of meetings <laughs> for, for work, and then they take full advantage of the Benchmade Knife Customizer. Uh, this is exactly what happens. Well, actually, no, this isn't what happens. Uh, first, what happens is that the folks from Benchmade reach out to me asking roughly, uh, wait, really? It is this a joke? Like, no, no, they, they, these are just my patrons. And then, then this arrives. And although it absolutely may not be a beautiful thing by my normal aesthetic standards, um, <laughs> it is truly and deeply a beautiful thing to me. And I will cherish it even while laughing to myself a little bit every damn time I look at it uh, to the end of my days. And in fact, it's found its way into my pocket far more often than I'm willing to admit. Uh, just <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, um, thank you very much to Grey King and all the rest of you wonderful jackasses on my Patreon server for putting this little bit of bee hunter into my life. And uh, yeah, it, I, I, I nailed it. Um, but anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.